you don't want to be a strong black woman no more. If I was to have a little Miss Ma'am or a little stink butt. Ain't no sequel. The last season, Moa Dean. Ain't no getting through them gates without that blood on you. I can tell he ordering my steps. Cause when the world said no, the father still said yes. I just need to, I need to say something. I need to talk at something, okay? Because I am currently, I'm feeling very hormonal. I'm feeling very nurturing, maternal, whatever the case may have you. And when I tell you the flesh and the spirit is knocking, like just they going at it, okay? And I'll tell you why, for many reasons. My brain mind. I wouldn't say that my biological clock is ticking. It has nothing to do with that. Um, because just with my concept, I know back in biblical times, you know, with the example of Sarah and so forth, you know, God willing, God can do anything when he wants to, it's his timing, right? However, <laughs> my flesh for decades have been programmed from the actual upbringing of the propaganda that has perpetrated my generation. <laughs> and it was you know, the Destiny's Child, Independent Woman, Neo, Independent, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? I got my own house, <laughs> got my own car, two jobs, work hard. I'm a bad bro. Okay, that's what been the whole stewing of the pot, especially with me growing up. Now, as an adult, okay, having the urge to just, you know, I am thankful that I've had the opportunity to go to higher education, getting my degrees and so forth. Very, you know, thankful for that experience because I don't think if that piece was there, I wouldn't gain as much skills that I did outside of it. Um, so I'm not trying to say that going to college is a make or break it type of thing. You know, it, there's different things for everybody. But I'm saying because I went the route in which I thought was best for me at the time. And now my gears are shifting Because it's like, girl, none of that even matters. You don't want to be a strong black woman no more. You don't want to be the rock no more. You want to be taken care of. You want to be fed, clothed, <laughs> and sheltered. You know what I'm saying? And I'm working towards that, okay? We are having a plan in place, okay? We're going to have to take them steps. I'm, I don't want to... Oh, that's such a oh, that's, if, that's such an iffy word, but I'm gonna say it. I have been known to be aloof, right? But it's not in a non-constructive way. When I have my aloof moments, when I want my own space, it's just so I can process certain things when it comes to either my creativity, business-wise. Um, personal development wise that's why I need the space because I feel like I need to be more silent within myself to understand what I'm feeling and so forth so it's not like people annoy me or they're bothering me I just need the space so I can have mental clarity right <laughs> so when I am in the process of 
in a way being a kept woman because you know that's like a modern term but in biblical days that's what most women were experiencing they had their basic needs met and they were holding down the household and so forth so it's just like for me to be programmed for so many years to say hey you know you need to be an independent woman you don't need anybody you are the person that x y and z now mind you generations before you know with the black buying the block and everything right you know the grandma was the monarch of the whole situation and the families expanded from there and you had 15 1100 grandkids yes you know and the marriages withheld decades upon decades now mind you i understand that not all of them were perfect they stayed because of the kids some of them most of them were built on black love and so forth i get all of that right i get the spectrum and i get the balance for me this is where the spirit and the flesh are just it they're not sinking they're trying to but they're not so for me in the flesh it's just like me being programmed to have such an idealistic, individualistic, solidarity, isolated, you know, mindset. Because, you know, growing up again, being told that you don't need anybody but yourself. You don't need to have somebody to support you and so forth. But it's just like me growing up with my dad and my mom, they were married 24 years, like just short of 25 years before he passed away. And when I tell you, even after death, that man, my dad, set the family up. And I've mentioned this in other videos. He was just good at setting things up because he knew that he was sick and he knew, you know, the outcomes that could be and so forth. So he just took it upon himself as a man to be sure because he was always somebody that made sure his family was, was good while he was here but he knew he wanted them to be good after he passed so he was a fantastic man I've only known him nine years but you know just from the stories where people would tell me and so forth and continuing you know especially my mom mentioning it too so me knowing you know, growing up that family dynamic, right? That could have been if he was still here. Being just ripped away <laughs> from the societal views that I was subject to. And the friends that you're around when you're younger, like, I don't need no man. I walked in, wah, woo, do, woo, pow, 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 You know what I'm saying? So I became pow, 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 pow. And you can't tell me nothing and da, 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 da firecracker right i'm a short woman you know how people say short packages come in you know they fiery and they i don't care but still at the same time it's true i don't care if six two six five two hundred three hundred pounds it is what it is i don't know if that's the zeal in me <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i i don't know okay i just have the complete understanding that I may have a Napoleon complex, okay? But we're chipping away at it. We are, we are chipping away. So, <laughs> with the flesh part and unlearning certain things and being able to look at the scriptures and everything when it comes to the independent woman or the mannerisms in which men in a way try to guide women to not be their greatest you know that's all in the bible like you know how people say you were f boy or whatever it is, whatever that's in the bible when it, a hot girl summer, I don't know if people even say that anymore. I don't know. That's in the Bible. Okay. That is, it's just. So, 
now that I'm breaking the mold and just unleashing just certain stuff that I have have known before it's just like none of that interests me anymore none of it makes me feel any you know sense of anything this whole month I have <laughs> just been like I just want to be fully, you know, a person and a woman that they explain that who she needs to be and the guidelines are in the Bible. I want to be like that. I want to be able to hold a household down for a family. And that's exactly what I'm wrestling with. I don't know if people think about this, but literally I just had this conversation that a man has millions of sperm. Okay. Do you know how powerful that is? Yes. Only one makes it to the egg. The sperm splits it to be able to have twins and triplets and all that. Like what? Because the man is carrying the seed, okay? Seeds a lot. Like And then the and then the woman, mind you, everybody has a vessel, but the spirit is in the body slash the vessel. And for a woman to have a vessel of her own and to have a spirit of her own. And then she conceives, she also has another vessel and spirit with inside her. So she's carrying two bodies, two spirits. It's just like, for me, being programmed, you don't need no child. You, do you see how messed up this world is? But on the contrary, this world has been messed up since the beginning of time. God said, I'm going to flood this place. And I messed up for even making humans. Okay? So if you think he, he can restart the planet by a flood, he's going to restart it in another way that no man has seen. But we ain't going to go into that right now. But all I'm saying is... Having the notion of no, you don't need kids and they're so stressing. Now, mind you, growing up, seeing the examples that I have seen with people that I've known to have children and how stressed out they are. That wasn't the example that my mom explained to me. She would say, you know, all these mothering tips to me. So for me to be like, because she did it twice, it's like, it's doable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Horror, like, it was more horror stories than blissful stories that I have been told and have seen in my lifetime when it came to having children. So that just completely turned me off. And plus the everlasting examples of how marriages just don't work anymore nowadays so it's just like it just turned me off completely to having kids but now reading certain things and understanding the spirit and understanding cultivating the love and having a lineage through your husband's seed it's just like because you can even gain salvation through childbearing and that's a powerful thing and you know if some women i mean they they reprobate i'm just saying just is what it is but for me something in me <laughs> is like i because i don't think financially anybody except when you're like a millionaire that you would have your ducks in a row to be able to fully have everything you desire for a child and for regular people like myself 
that's not a realistic thing and my mom always used to tell me too you're never gonna be financially ready for a child right but that was her experience and that was her and her husband's my dad's experience which is completely fine for back in the day they knew that they loved each other they knew that they had each other's back and so forth so they were going to do it regardless they were going to create that love in a human <laughs> and instill that in them and make it so looking at certain things if i was to have a little miss ma'am or a little stink butt i was thinking that you know this world is so toxic it's so ick but it's been that way and people especially god's children has pushed through and have children had children and so forth even until this day they are being fruitful and they are multiplying right that hasn't stopped except for when the programming happened in my generation and it's snowballing out of control and for someone to especially just speaking for myself getting ripped out of what i was taught society wise and now looking at things biblically i'm i'm really trying to be in the spirit because it pregnancy doesn't scare me if i knew i had a regular body okay that health wise to me is coming into play which made me push towards not having children but just as a side note too children as i think you know as you are in diapers as a baby when you have children they're able to help you when you're in diapers because it's, it's diaper to diaper that's the lifespan. You're going to end up in diapers as a baby. You're going to end up in diapers in the elderly. It just is what it is, right? So to me, I'm thinking, okay, who, who is going to take care of me when I'm decrepit? You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, God willing, I get to that age. I, I Then I automatically get into, again, Back to the health situation it's like what I automatically have to be a c-section type of patient I don't know if I would be able to naturally give birth and then I thought about surrogacy I thought about adoption but it's just like those two things are expensive like it's on the financial side and with surrogacy you know back then biblical times that was a thing so I don't want to rule that out, but at the same time, I feel like, I don't know, I just have the feeling if I was to bear a child that I would need to carry it myself. But at the same time, is that feasible for my body to go through? Because that is one of the main reasons why I have been apprehensive on bearing children because they i just i don't know if i want to explain everything but basically for a person such as myself um when it comes to my reproductive organs let's just say it's not all the way it's not typical and even though my mom she has the same thing um so heredity i guess i just got it from her thanks mom <laughs> but um she was able to carry two children to full term you know without a c-section and she you know has the short frame like i do like it's pretty much identical and yes, it's possible, but my mom's experience may not be mine. I may have more difficulty with fertility because 
even though she still conceived, it took her nine additional years to have me than with my brother, right? So it's like it could take me a very long time to be fertile and to conceive. It I may be barren. I don't know if I'm barren or not. Um, I guess I could go to the doctors and see what my egg count is. I have no clue. But like, do I even want to go that far into things if I don't know if it, if I can even settle and have a household that I can rule over. Now, mind you, when I say rule over, I mean as a woman in the biblical text does. Like she holds the fort down, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I've been trying to do. I've never <laughs> wanted, I've always wanted love. I never wanted to have to be on a, you know, just everything is on me. Like I, I'm okay with going 50 50 if that would it if that's what it takes. But I've never fully just wanted to be on my own. I was programmed to want those things, but it was always combative within my spirit. So now that I'm at this certain point, right, and I'm getting more solid in certain things, and I am understanding the power of what motherhood could do i i know that there are certain temperaments within children i know that the first baby can be completely calm happy content and then the second baby comes around and they completely just are off the hinges and or vice versa right i know that there can be because i've known this you know through my family you know, it was just always talked about like, oh, how hard of a pregnancy this was and so forth. And I never want to do it again. So somebody's an only child as a result of it. That breaks my heart because I had a sibling. Yeah, we're nine years apart, but at least like during one point in our lives, we were living together and we were brother and sister to not even have that. And to be around adults all the time, mind you, I was around adults all the time. But I had the balance of having my brother in school, you know, whatever. This is why I'm as mature as I am. There's pros and cons to everything. So I'm just trying to figure out the pros and cons for me. Because I know for a fact that I need to be held down. When it comes to being able to have my focus switch from being career oriented and just all this stuff. Because I already know, because I've never had a good sleep schedule anyway, I know with a baby is going to be 10 times worse. And I know that, you know, certain time periods you do not have the same freedom as you do when you are a person that doesn't have kids. However, the biblical situation calls for none of that. It doesn't call for you having fun times when you're having children or even when you're not having children. It doesn't call for that. It's a very structured type of thing. So I need to know that when I bore children or a child that I am going to have the settled house like a physical place where I feel comfortable, where I feel like I could strive in, where I feel like I could take care of it every day and so forth and be able to raise a son or daughter with a man in the household. That's a lot of things that people are missing nowadays. When a man is there, I'm not, I refuse fuse okay I will not not have a man in that household okay because I am catering and curating a space for that man and my child and or children okay 
that's the whole <laughs> vision that I am having now. But I have to understand that there are certain steps that I still need to take before that happens. Like, for example, back to the health thing. I already know I need to switch up a lot of stuff. I want to a prior year before I start trying to conceive and just making sure that people understand <laughs> and by people I mean someone and if you're watching this <laughs> that I need to know that my standards of living will continue because it's another thing that's grappling me is me knowing that I would not have a space of my own to go to if I needed to because a lot of women get kicked out in their circumstances. Now, this is the programming that I was subject to. However, you have to believe within your situation that it is solid and that is not a choice and or option. That it's not going to happen because it, 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 it's scary to me because of being so self-sufficient for so long it is so scary finding a place with somebody else trying to settle within that establishment and like you have a key i have a key we're doing this together type of thing that is scary as shit to me because i have been shown and i've been kicked out i'm gonna just keep it a bean I have been kicked out of somebody's house. <laughs> We're past that, okay? We, we are past it. Didn't hurt nonetheless, right? So I don't... That's still in my mind that I still need to heal from. Both of our names have to be on the utilities. Both of our names have to be on the property. Both of our names, need, it needs to be both... So it's shared accountability and responsibility, okay? Now, mind you, the household thing when it comes to me taking a step back with working and so forth, yeah, I'm taking a back seat so I can raise my child. However, you're not getting kicked out? I'm not getting kicked out. You're not finna play with me? I'm not finna play with you. You know what I'm saying? It's just a <laughs> mutual <laughs> solid understanding and that's what I'm trying to get to I'm trying to get myself in a certain mold with this newfound want for that household and even though it's relatively still new and I'm still like one foot in one foot out situation I just need to know that the counterpart for me is going to be the man of the Bible. Now, mind you, followers of Christ, yes. But there are actions that need to be put into place before a woman is comfortable to completely settle into that realm of holding down the house and motherhood that's just my opinion i'm not gonna be with the chaotic situation because the parents are the ones that hold down the discipline hold down the authority and so forth kids would not run my household like they do now i'm gonna tell y'all that right now my children would never run my household that's what this situation and the generations afterward have messed up. You cannot rely on the school system to raise your kids. You got to raise your kids. Okay? 
And that's what just messes me up every time because y'all relying on everything you're relying on, these tablets, you're relying on these um, self-sufficient programs or whatever. And I don't even think about homeschooling my children if I have some because y'all not, fin not finna play with my child. You're not finna teach them this bogus ass shit. Sorry. <laughs> you can tell, like, I could be real passionate with this subject because I already know as a mom, You taught my child what? Get get the whole out of here. You know what I'm saying? No. So that's another thing. It's a preventative thing too. It's just like I know I got to send them through a school system. Is it public? Is it private? Is it homeschool? Like what options do I have? And how can I prevent them from being soiled? from this earth how can i make sure that they are close to god in christ how can i make sure that they are learning the fundamental things that are in the bible how can i do that it's just it's a balanced thing it's a thing that it's so irritating and frightening i know i can't prevent everything i think i have the ability to actually teach things that make it relatable and things that are able to just be easygoing I guess um just so that they don't stray away from certain foundational things because at the end of the day your values, your systems, your, you know, just how you are as a person. Your parents are a heavy, impactful thing when it comes to that. Or your caretakers or whatever the case may have you. I'm not trying to be insensitive in that way. Um, but whoever raised you and whoever was the adult supervision in your household. Because again, you know, a lot of people, they learned a lot of things on their own, me included. You know, I had very good ideals, you know, that I was told about, you know, and for that short time actually saw, but other than that, nine on, age nine on. <laughs> it was, figure it out, honey. And I just know that as a, as a mom, if I ever was to be, I, I couldn't be like, a, <laughs> good luck. I'm, I'm over here, but I'm not here. I just, I wouldn't be able to do that to my child. I couldn't. And just like, you know, my mom, she, especially when it comes to academics and stuff, my mom, when they say to her that she raised the children that she did and how they're proud of us she was just like they did it by themselves <laughs> and it's true like she you know the only education she had was high school and it didn't go beyond that this was back then you know what i'm saying she's an older parent so it's just like it was reading writing and arithmetic that's where i'm at now and on top of me just being hormonal and just in like a spiritual zeal for motherhood. <laughs> it's like I got to figure that out. And if one day I feel comfortable, I'm saying the steps that it takes for me to be able to run a effective household and not be bothered by the worldly stressors and everything like that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying like I need to have this type of car. I need to have this penthouse or I need to. I'm not saying that. Now, mind you, girl, girl bougie still. I don't know if that's going to really dissipate. I'm fabulous. Just is what it is. Um... <laughs> 
So it's just as long as I have a compromisable standard that's reasonable and I'm able to, again, get fed, clothed, everything else, like just be dependent on a man and I can raise my kid in a calm environment, in a loving environment, that's all I can ask for. So hopefully, maybe, possibly, that's in the books for me down the line. Again, this is just a two, three year projection type of thing. I don't know if it can, if it even can happen in three years. Um, again, it's God's timing. It's not mine. You know, I, I can have a plan. I can have a guideline of what I see for myself, but you know, you just never know. So all I know is that's where I am thinking in my mindset right now. And I'm going to just need some words of encouragement because this, oh, this is a doozy. This is too much. Mama ish. Mom Dukes, like, eh. I don't want to be Mom Dukes. But at the same time, I feel like I got to be Mom Dukes. Because the, cause the personality and everything else just can't die when I do. You know what I mean? It's just like the, the intellectual properties and the creativeness that I do, it just can't fold when I do. to iron some stuff out and I will okay so if anybody else is in the realm of maybe you're a guy and you're wanting to provide um, for your wife or for the lady that is in your life um, and you're trying to figure out the steps on when to do it you just keep going you know you being a man and you're growing with it so let's do that women Got a lot of growing to do okay just overall just speaking overall there's a lot of unlearning to do there's a lot of healing to do there's a lot of things that just need to be completely erased before you're 52 and alone you're going to be washed up by then it just is what it is and that at that point you an elder okay so if you want some respect at this point, you just got to be, just have a certain decorum about yourself. That's all. The buck needs to stop at some point. The bull crap with this toxicity as women need to stop. And it just is what it is. I hope you enjoyed another Vessel Talk with me. And until the next one, take care.